Hello and welcome today to today's Vivid uh, presentation on digital transformation with HP Enterprise Cloud Management. This webinar is brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I'm your host, Milan Danrell, with Machine Data Systems and HP Partner, and I'm also the Toronto Vivid Chapter Leader. Our speakers today are Danny Cavillon, who's Director of Cloud and Automation Management for HP Enterprise, and Mark Burness, who's DevOps and Cloud Solution Architect for HP Enterprise. Danny is the Business Development Director with HPE Software in EMEA, focusing on automation and cloud solutions, such as orchestrated data center, cloud management, and continuous delivery and deployment. Mark uh, has worked as a pre-sales with large enterprise customers for more than 20 years to define and deliver IT strategies and solutions, bringing deep expertise in architecting software components for cloud computing and DevOps solutions. So we're very pleased to have both of them uh, available to speak with us today. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available to all Vivid members after the webinar. So your uh, lines will be muted, but you can ask questions by typing them directly into the questions pane in the control panel, uh, which is typically located on the right-hand side of your screen. If you're not familiar with GoToWebinar, all of the features and functions for participating in the webinar are on the control panel, which is typically located on the top right corner of your screen. You can mute yourself, you can ask questions, and you can participate in chat as well. During our session today, we will have a couple of polls, uh, and those questions will appear on screen. And we'll also open the session to Q&A towards the end of the uh, the session. So if you do have questions, uh, please feel free to type them in and we'll take as many of them as we can today. So on to our presentation on digital transformation with HP Enterprise uh, Cloud Management. I'm pleased to welcome Danny Cavion to begin with our presentation. So good morning all, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much Milan for the introduction as well. Today we're going to talk about uh, changes. Um, I think we all agree with the title of this slide. The world is changing. So from a technological point of view, the world is changing big time. Uh, new digital experiences and the explosion of technology, uh, these are all factors that are enabled by new digital interactions. Uh, these, changes, these changes are affecting the society in which we live no matter where we are, um, on many different levels. Uh, it does affect us as individuals, but people, we, as people, we are becoming more impatient, more demanding. We're having um, higher expectations as customers. Uh, we want transparency, we want uh, connectivity, we want ease of use, we want speed, we want availability, and we want to be surprised. We want to be surprised with increasingly innovative services. If an application is slow or simply not appealing, well, we go somewhere else um, where the company can provide us the kind of level and quality and speed we are used to. Uh, but uh, it's also affecting the world at business level. So greatest challenges is how to stay competitive for a business. How do I make sure as a business that I keep my customer base or even better, how can I increase it today? So businesses need to react fast to changing markets. They need to find new challenges. They need to anticipate, or even better, as we said before, they need to exceed the customer's needs. They need to become more flexible, more agile. They've got to be able to quickly implement new products and new services. And as a result, new business models are um, getting uh, to be required, and that needs a new level of partnership and trust as well. Now, time to value of new ideas has massively reduced. We see it everywhere. And that enables new players to emerge, disrupting traditional business models and leverage the explosion of, the, of this connected world we are getting used to. So every person and everything is now connected. Uh, we can think of 
lots of different examples. Um, while preparing this, this deck with Mark, I thought of the three examples that I guess wherever you are, you kind of be kind of familiar with. The first one is television content. Uh, we are getting used to a very customized experience. We can see TV content everywhere on our mobile, on our tablets, on PC, and yes, even on TV somehow. So Netflix, for example, they learn what I like, and it creates a list of shows that we'll surely watch because it's based on my preferences. And we're talking about a company that has been uh, has, has so many customers. I think around eight million customers in, in a matter of few years. Uh, do you want to repair your car? Well, if you're like me, you go to a garage. But if you are a lucky owner of a Tesla, uh, you might simply have to wait for an update. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was an issue with um, um, some of the Tesla models, and instead of recalling all the cars, they simply sent an update, just like we have on our mobile when we update an app, just like that. Then recently, I was in, a, in a, an exhibition um, showing some uh, prototypes, and I saw a prototype of a new kind of shop window. And this window looks like a, a transparent screen. So it provides info on weather, on the, some news, some advertisements. It provides uh, passer buyers with the prices of the items it displays. But it also counts how many people walk by and how long they stop in front of any given product. And it analyzes everything, all the data that it collects. It can even answer questions the passer buyers might have. How interesting, yeah? So we're getting used to that. We're getting used to having to live in a place where data is important. It's almost like a currency. Digital wealth is almost as important as the balance sheet of a company. We need to collect, create, mine, and exploit this data. So most companies around the world, they have understood the need of creating a digital experience as part of their digital transformation. A digital experience defines the new market in which products and services need to deliver value. Now, in the digital experience, there's no distinction as such between human and machine-based interactions. Workflows and analytics work in real time to put everything into context and to personalize um, whatever service and product we deliver for every customer and for every process or business process. Now, this is translating to different paradigms. At business level, with new business, with new business models, these usually are sponsored by the CEO. But influence is also the operation model that needs to be more flexible, more adaptable, and more nimble uh, from a business or from a process perspective. Now, similar characteristics that we need to find to the new business partner, which is the IT. The IT model needs to be highly performant, always with an eye on the cost, like it is it has been so far, but at the same time, and even more so, on quality and time to market. So the IT role is critical. They need to interpret the requirements that the business has and drive a transformation of the infrastructure model to respond and meet these new requirements. Now, starting from the infrastructure and moving left to the business, the focus evolves from also making simple tasks, repetitive tasks, to orchestrate processes to transform the way we deliver services. So in this world, of automate, we are replacing low-value manual tasks that humans do with machine-driven tasks. And this is the key of getting a return on infrastructure model innovation. Now, these two movements, the business-driven and the IT-driven uh, movements, are generating um, an area of creative tension between, uh, between business drivers and technology innovation and it's through this creative tension that we see innovation emerging. We see new operating models becoming a reality. I'm sure we all agree um, that if speed is not there, well, the line of business might decide to bypass IT and create uh, what we know as shadow IT. They could quickly confine our IT to a mere cost center. However, 
When combined, IoT has the ability to contribute to the business outcome and elevate itself, elevate the IT as a key component of the business value chain. Now, our focus is on enabling the IT to support and drive this transformation. So deliberately taking advantage of this new creative tension, establishing the agile environment organizations will need to succeed, allowing for new business model to come to fruition. So in a nutshell, we want to build a platform of efficient automation and responsive orchestration that we can deploy the next generation of innovative Platform. This is the kind of IT that enables business model innovation. Now, at this point, I'd like to launch a, a poll with um, all of you uh, in, a, in attendance today in the audience. And so we're going to open the poll. And the question is, who is responsible for the digitalization office in your company? I'd like to have a feeling of uh, um, who's responsible for the digitalization office in your company. So you've got um, a few options there. Is it a business line? Uh, is it at CIO level? Is it below CIO level? Or maybe you don't have one yet, or maybe you don't know if there is one. It's also an option. But just to have a, a quick um, uh, feeling of uh, what the reality is in, this, um, in the audience we have, within the audience we have today. And this is Milan again. I'd like to uh, invite everyone who hasn't uh, weighed in yet on the poll to please take a few seconds to consider the question and provide us with your response. We'll keep the poll open for another 10 seconds and then we'll review our results. Okay, it looks like about two-thirds have uh, voted, and here is what we have as far as our results. Danny, back to you. Thank you very much. Could you, can I ask you to read the results? Because I'm not sure if I can see them on my screen. Oh, I apologize. They, uh, they came off uh, the screen. So we found that about 30% of the respondents uh, had uh, the digitalization uh, office at the business lines level and 33%, a third, at the CIO level. So those are the two primary. Uh, below CIO, 10%. Uh, 23%, almost a quarter, said, I don't know or we're not sure. Uh, uh, who uh, or which uh, function is responsible for digitalization in our company. Thank you very much, Milan. Appreciate that. I think it's interesting. Huh? Uh, it's, it's interesting data. So there's like a fight going on between who, who owns it. And it's not just the IT. It's the business has a, a clear uh, saying on, on, on the matter. Very interesting. Um, I, th I think it's interesting as well that some of you might not know where it is. And it doesn't mean that you don't have it. It's just because it's something in, in the happening. Um, you know, it's a very interesting uh, discussion there to, to have as well. Um, now, wh where is the critical point? Well, at the application level, most probably. The app is the connecting point with our customers in this hyperly digitalized world. Um, you know, companies are asking, what do I do with with my apps. First of all, there's a huge number of apps in any given portfolio. And that's a, that's a common problem that we hear from, uh, from our customers. You know, customers tend to have thousands of, of applications. You know, if you look at the enterprise market, we're talking about 10,000 or more existing in, in our customers' CMDB, running on over 10,000 different servers. So that's a very poorly utilized, high cost, not as high as all, way of, uh, of managing um, applications. Uh, customers, especially the, the business, they want something cheaper, more responsive to their business needs, they work while still maintaining uh, the controls that they, they need. And we mentioned that before we um, touched upon shadow IT, for example. So the first thing to do is, what do I need to move to the public cloud? Or what should I launch as cloud native? Now, we see that 15% of the applications tend to be in the public cloud. These usually, are, at the moment at least, still mass marketing applications, gamification apps, apps for loyalty pro, um, programs, or, or brand knowledge 
applications. Um, if you're talking about startup customers, then they might start looking at new digital processes as well to be in, in a public cloud. Large enterprises, though, they, they rather have that in a private cloud platform. Now, interestingly, 10% of the application, um, they, they don't need to change those applications. They see that there is, they're very stable, they don't cost a lot, and there's no business case for, for changes. While 30%, um, they, might, um, they might retire or be replaced with a, a software as a service application to better invest money to what is more critical. So what direction to take um, is huge, usually a huge question mark. Uh, while discussing this specific topic with various CIOs um, a few months ago, that was a typical question uh, you know, we were discussing. Which direction do I take? What applications can be scrapped or taken to a SaaS platform? Which traditional applications shouldn't be moved at all? They should be industrialized onto newer converged infrastructure to lower costs. Which applications should be moved to the cloud, but maybe uh, they need to stay on premise, so private clouds. And for those applications that can get to the public cloud, where security isn't a big concern, um, wh wh which ones and where do I start? So these are all questions that uh, our customers um, have. I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, it's in, uh, in the minds of, of some of you as well today. So this is a fair representation of a type of customer problem that, um, that our customers have when they talk about transforming to a hybrid uh, infrastructure. But it's, uh, it's a question mark that needs to find some answers. The business and the IT are moving faster, faster than ever before. The way IT reacts to this new pace is key. IT can no, can no longer just focus on managing costs. IT must be able to deliver value to create value, to deliver real business outcomes to their, to their businesses, but also to their customers. And to succeed, business and IT needs to be strictly uh, linked, tightly linked to each other. So IT must shift from a cost center to a business value creator, to be more, to be proactively, to be proactive while producing and managing, uh, while producing services and, uh, and delivering new services while managing risks. They need to move from saving data to using data for real-time insight that allows unique customized experiences for customers or for citizens if you're part of a public uh, company. They need to move from software that automates business processes to software that differentiates products and the customer experiences. So basically, they need to land on software that creates value. And succeeding in this transformation is where HPE leads like uh, no other company. So now, on, on this point, I'd, I'd like to hand over to Mark the needs uh, a mere pre-sales lead for cloud and automation to take us through how we are helping our customers and partners deal with big IT challenges and major shifts in technologies and how we've been doing this for a number of years. So Mark, thank you, Danny. You. Yeah. So, um, obviously, the first uh, um, area to investigate uh, is the 15% uh, new uh, applications area in which, really, we have to rethink and uh, create uh, new solutions for being really linked um, in a very agile, very, uh, uh, let's say, DevOps-oriented applications for serving the businesses. So when we look at uh, all, all this category of new applications, um, in fact, it will be really about uh, agility, low cost, scalability, um, API-based and internet standard. What does this mean? This means that uh, we will go for all the uh, new stuff we are uh, 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 using and developing around the cloud. It can be, for instance, containerization and micro-virtualization of applications to, to, to get them more agile using PaaS platforms, uh, any um, solution which will really help like DevOps to really uh, develop very clear, very quickly 
um, and, and very efficiency, new application and services for the business. And this is an area uh, we can use uh, for uh, also transforming the uh, big elephant. Uh, the, the core IT, which, which is today 100% or 99% of the uh, uh, IT services and applications, which is today based on million lines and quantity of uh, uh, code, which, which, which is re really uh, immense. And the idea for, for this is really to leverage um, the knowledge uh, uh, customers are developing uh, into the uh, agile area to uh, drive the transformation of the core IT to get it obviously uh, 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 less costly but also uh, more agile, uh, componentized enough to uh, serve also uh, new applications because uh, it's, it's very rare to get applications uh, which will be completely disconnected from uh, the traditional core IT backend. So, moving the two areas, let's say the, the first 15% of new applications, kind of uh, um, systems of experimentation, uh, the way large enterprise can really uh, develop new stuff, link it tightly with a transformation of the core IT, is, is really the, the way to uh, transform the, uh, <clears throat> the role information system, uh, short and mid-term, uh, to, uh, to, to reach the digital transformation and bring good value for businesses and uh, end users and also good control points and security for VAT. So when we uh, want to implement this um, in, in HP software, what what we recommend is that uh, really getting the, the big IT elephant in the dance. So priorities, being able to finance the new applications and new platforms, being able to really lower the uh, overall cost of the traditional IT, while making it more agile, being able to be delivered in, in minutes instead of uh, months or weeks like, uh, like it can be today. So for this, the, uh, the methodology is, is always the same. The idea is really to get everything as a service and apply a methodology in which discussing with businesses, understanding which are the uh, top priorities for transformation, then making a transformation plan for moving all of these applications, uh, all of these components in a more efficient cloud way and for this really going to uh, uh, a single design consumable uh, through a single uh, portal or API which will really offer any kind of components. It can be the very uh, traditional and legacy components like uh, VMware virtualization, it can be the uh, funny new ones with micro virtualization like Docker, but it can be also very traditional uh, 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 hardware infrastructure like commissioning a physical server for some critical activities on database uh, or um, uh, going to public cloud like uh, Amazon Web Services or uh, Microsoft Azure. So that's really getting a single uh, uh, pane of control for um, all the components, uh, all the kind of Legos we need to uh, assembly into a technical design and exposing them uh, to uh, 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 all the uh, possible consumers uh, in a global IT. So uh, when you go to uh, this kind of uh, 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 implementation, uh, what you will get at the end, um, in fact in multiple phases uh, in which you will move progressively uh, components, technologies, applications and also users and uh, consumers, is really business workloads as a service. The idea is to handle um, the, the traditional workloads, mostly system of records, uh, the area in which uh, we uh, uh, modify the uh, uh, core data of an enterprise IT systems, um, banking transactions, uh, um, manufacturing, uh, uh, orders, everything which is really at the core of a business 
and which is today mostly on traditional uh, uh, or sometimes really partially on, uh, on private cloud. The second area will be the system of differentiation, which is exposing the, uh, all of this data uh, to users and consumers in a very efficient way. And, and mostly using uh, in any kind of uh, uh, technology which will be able to uh, uh, present this data and uh, consume this data from multiple devices and multiple uh, 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 user interfaces. The last one, uh, which, which looks uh, really uh, 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 important, is the system of innovation. So, uh, the way uh, we will create new applications which will leverage all these new systems. And that, that, that is also really well represented in the uh, HP's multi-cloud strategy, uh, which is really at the core of uh, what we build in HP software. Uh, um, what do we need? We need to uh, take care of traditional uh, workload, um, of traditional apps, and we need to transform them uh, into a more efficient way using all the resources we have. That's mostly traditional workload orchestration. On the other side, really on the uh, uh, experimentation and innovation, we have the cloud native orchestration. Um, and the ability to orchestrate workloads, which will be mostly uh, running on past platforms or in, in micro containerization. We have all of our resources, private or managed cloud, Docker, vSphere, uh, um, uh, OpenStack, any emerging platform, uh, which will re rely on some uh, uh, infrastructure. And then, obviously, the public cloud or uh, um, any, any really public resources, which is sometimes very clever to uh, uh, to, uh, to add to a specific wor workload based on regulation and uh, compliance of what we have to build. And the traditional legacy we have to carry on, uh, but in a more efficient way for being able to deliver it um, uh, in an easier way to uh, all the consumers. So I think this is a good time for, for, for me to uh, ask you uh, a few questions uh, around the uh, uh, the category of application you want to move first uh, into a, a, a digital strategy. So time for, for a poll uh, to understand exactly which are your, your priorities in moving workloads uh, into cloud and new uh, 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 and modern application framework. And we'd like to invite all participants to take a moment to review the question in our poll. Which category of applications are the most urgent to transform, create, or adapt to your digital strategy? Uh, the core business applications, traditional applications, native applications, or new cloud native applications for the core business, or even applications bought from a third party. So we'll just take another uh, 20 seconds. Uh, to get a sense of uh, which applications you feel are the most urgent uh, for your digital strategy. Okay, we'll take another 10 seconds for people to register their, their votes and we'll, uh, we'll compare the results in just a few seconds then. And our, here's our results. Uh, so we see that the majority of the applications are traditional applications that will be re-architected. Oh, I apologize. The, the, the majority is not new cloud native applications to the core business, followed by traditional applications. Uh, as the next uh, highest category, and so uh, Mark, uh, any comments on, on, yeah, on those numbers? Yeah, that, 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 that's a very interesting re result because past platform and cloud native applications are really at the early beginning uh, in in enterprises, and there is already a big focus on this. Um, I like also uh, uh, to see that uh, there, there is an interesting uh, 
uh, focus in uh, re-architecting re re traditional apps, uh, which can be uh, um, um, a, 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 a quicker, maybe, a way to uh, transform traditional uh, apps, but creating new applications um, uh, for core business is a, is a top priority for, for large customers. Thank you. So next slide, please. So for uh, uh, r running this transformation, being able really to handle um, any kind of uh, um, applications uh, in, in this new digital environment, um, we, we created in HP software the Alien Cloud Suite. And uh, the Alien Cloud Suite is mostly based on five main use cases. The first one is to provide really uh, a single place for ordering any kind of IT services from um, um, uh, a, a, a super modern uh, API pass uh, uh, to uh, uh, a simple laptop for uh, uh, somebody who needs a laptop for working or a tablet. So that, that, that's really being able to deal with multiple services catalogs aggregated them and expose them uh, uh, as a single uh, service catalog for the enterprise users. The second one is really um, uh, around being able to drive uh, the cloud native transformation, um, being able to link with um, uh, platforms like uh, Cloud Foundry or OpenShift, uh, being able to uh, uh, create automatically these platforms, uh, enable um, developers and consumers to directly uh, uh, get their application uh, um, uh, instantiated in these, in, in these environments. And this links also mostly to uh, uh, DevOps principle and, and the way we can uh, completely integrate all the uh, uh, life cycle of the development, uh, the, the, the testing, the QA, uh, the deployment, the operations, uh, and the uh, control uh, of um, uh, uh, new applications uh, we develop in this environment. And this brings me really to uh, uh, analytics and big data. We leverage uh, our big data portfolio into the suites to really bring uh, uh, actionable KPIs and understanding of what is happening uh, in, in any of these activities and how you can really drive um, the transformation of your IT uh, through a set of uh, uh, metrics which will be collected and analyzed all across the stack. Cloud management platform really being able to manage any category of cloud is really at the heart of the uh, Alien Cloud Suite. Um, it, it, it's really the ability to uh, take a component from any source, uh, use it in a design, then publish uh, this design as a service in a service catalog and offer a, a, a full uh, uh, cloud consumption of all of these components. And the last use case uh, is probably also uh, uh, one of the most important for being able to uh, uh, transform a global IT to uh, uh, a digital and more agile IT. It's about uh, orchestrating all the processes, uh, providing um, a, a, a library of uh, workflows and actions uh, which can deal roughly with our very complex uh, IT world and remove the uh, uh, manual tasks uh, which doesn't bring value to the IT and to the businesses um, and make them really predictable uh, in, 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 in an execution of a, uh, a cloud management platform. So that, that's really orchestration, orchestration of uh, all end-to-end -end, uh, items uh, we, we can have um, in, um, in, 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 in a large IT. Obviously, uh, this is about technology, and technology is one thing. Um, it's, it's, it will be okay for uh, uh, breaking the, the monoliths, the elephant, 
uh, into things which are smaller, easier to manage, uh, containerized, uh, uh, really orchestrated uh, in, in a very nice choreography to bring the value uh, in a more agile way very quickly and in a more predictable and secure way. But it's also a big change uh, from organization and culture. Um, if, if you look, for instance, just at the uh, uh, DevOps perspective for being able to uh, uh, transform an organization and really um, deliver systems of innovation, experimentation for uh, creating new applications which should bring value to businesses, um, changing the organization, cutting the silos, uh, changing the managing lines to more empower people um, uh, to their day-to-day -day activities while getting more automated control on the day-to-day -day activities uh, is, 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 is a big change for lar large organizations and I think that's an area in which our partners uh, really excel in uh, uh, helping customers to drive this organizational transformation and obviously there is a, 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 a big cultural transformation training people uh, changing the operating model uh, uh, from silos to DevOps, uh, um, moving from a centralized governance to uh, a, a service and application oriented governance, uh, mixing all the roles um, in, uh, um, in, in, uh, in, in IT uh, is, 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 a, is a very interesting transformation which is probably uh, uh, one of the first points uh, you, you have to think at the beginning of a large tra transformation like digitization. And, and so what is uh, interesting uh, with this is to look uh, what we did with some customers and I will uh, hand over to uh, Danny uh, to show us some uh, customers' references. Thank you, Mark. Thanks a lot for that. Um, yeah, I'd like to talk to, uh, to you about uh, a, um, an interesting experience we had with 20th Century Fox film. Um, I'm sure we all, we all know them. Uh, it's a global leader in the media and entertainment industry. Uh, basically, they get revenue from producing, acquiring, and distributing uh, movies and, uh, and TV series. Uh, that, that has been you know, put, it, put it simply. The, the entertainment industry has been significantly impacted by the digital age. Um, we all know it, you know, we want entertainment on demand, we want wherever we want we are, we want it when we want, and so forth, and on any device. So that kind of uh, uh, customer satisfaction uh, need, along with new digital products that have been launched, along with uh, the piracy issue and so forth, we're putting a lot of um, um, uh, struggle on the on the on the way that the digital or the supply chain uh, that uh, uh, 20th Century Fox had in place. Uh, the global distribution was called to their operation, and if Fox couldn't distribute its product, well, their revenue um, was to suffer. Now, to address that challenge, uh, it was vital for the IT to take a leadership position and to manage uh, that digital journey. Um, we've been able, we're happy actually to um, act as a, as a partner for, for them and together we created a new digital supply chain that uh, they called the Fox Media Cloud, which is basically a digital supply chain platform as a service solution. Uh, this hybrid cloud platform supports the collaboration and distribution of uh, lots of different things, um, marketing materials, broadcast quality, TV, um, episodes, and full-length uh, movies, uh, films, actually. Now, I'd like to, to tell you what used to happen before the Fox Media Cloud was in place and the results afterwards as well. So, for example, uh, Fox, we said, distributes TV content. They do it over two, over 800 sorry, broadcasters globally. Now. Previously, uh, before implementing this Fox Media Cloud, after a broadcaster and a Fox sales signed a license agreement, um, it took manual effort to check inventory for the licensed TV episodes. 
And if the episodes were not available, it took additional manual effort to manufacture each episode to the customer specifications. Then these tapes, physical tapes I'm talking about, for each episode would be shipped, and for each customer as well, would be shipped to the customer for their broadcast. Now, if you think about that, when it comes to shipping, that means taking into consideration clearing as well for, uh, for customs. So that was also an additional uh, time that uh, got wasted in the whole process. Now, today, with the Fox, with the implementation of the Fox Media Cloud, so after, licensing, after the licensing agreement has been signed, the entire order to delivery content process is automated using cloud services and metadata. So that means that instead of receiving tapes, broadcast quality files of each episode or movie is automatically pushed to the broadcaster's network for immediate broadcasting, avoiding shipping time, expenses, and, custom, uh, and bypassing customs as well. Now, you can see the business outcomes on the screen there. They're, they're rather impressive, but I think there's, there's more than that. There's other data that's interesting to, to mention as well. To give you an idea of what goes through this uh, Fox Media Cloud, uh, they've been able to add over 3 million assets in the content repository. So that means distributing um, over 150,000 contents every month. Uh, that's equal to 1.3 exabytes per year um, of content, either sent, received, or downloaded. And that would allow them to automate over 70 digital media scenarios across their global uh, platform. Uh, quite, quite, quite impressive. And you can see the way they've been able to, um, to translate that into business uh, results. Millions of annualized cost saving. Now, this is just uh, an example that I thought was nice um, um, sharing with, uh, with you. Uh, but I, I, I do encourage you to uh, go on this website uh, and listen to other um, cloud stories, as we like to call them. Um, maybe there are some that are more pertinent to your vertical, to the industry you're in. Um, I'm sure we can provide you with, uh, with this tech afterwards. But if not, you just have to Google HP cloud stories. And you get a list of uh, um, lots of different customers. These are the logos on this slide. Is, uh, they're just a small representation of all the various customers we have in that repository. And if you don't like reading, <laughs> but if you prefer talking to some of our customers, um, I, I invite you to listen live to our customers. Um, maybe share your concerns, share your um, your, your challenges that uh, you're facing as well uh, with, uh, with us uh, or with our customers as well. Um, on the, from the 29th of November to the, to the 1st of December, we're going to have the biggest customer event uh, for Europe and Africa, and that's going to be in, in London. Um, so you've got uh, a, a link as well on this, uh, on this uh, uh, page that you can, uh, you can go and register uh, yourself. Uh, there you will find uh, both myself and our PMs uh, and there uh, is executive management as well from HP. But mainly you'll be able to, to read talk freely to uh, some customers and share some challenges that this new world of digitalization that we've been talking today um, have created and the solutions that we've been able to, to bring about for um, our customer success and hopefully for your success too. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank you all for, uh, for your attention. And, um, and I'll pass it on to uh, Milan to open up to question and answers. Uh, thank you, uh, Mark and uh, Danny. Uh, so at this time, we'd like to open up uh, the, uh, the questions. Um, if you look at your screens and notice the uh, GoToMeeting uh, control panel, there's a section there where you can uh, type in your questions. So we'll uh, take a few uh, minutes here to go through some Q&A. Uh, and uh, if it, we'll go through as many as we can t uh, today. So. Um, uh, yes, first question, uh, and I guess this could go to either Denny or Mark. Uh, where should our organization begin with digital transmission? 
My, I realize my it's a broad yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, my, my perspective for this question is that uh, the, the, really the first thing to uh, understand is um, w what in the application portfolio is needed, uh, which kind of um, uh, services and workloads need to be developed or uh, uh, transformed into a, a more, much more agile way. Based on uh, based on this priority and depending on what will be the results, you can you can go in multiple paths. Uh, but the two main ones are the following. The first one will be about really um, going to uh, DevOps and developing uh, new cloud native applications, um, and probably that will be done um, in 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 a separated team uh, from the uh, traditional IT team. Uh, um, with uh, dedicated resources for building this uh, and then uh, uh, operating this. So that, that's the first path and the second one will be to uh, uh, go f to the traditional IT uh, and to identify in the traditional IT uh, which are the pieces which need to be abstracted, uh, consumed through APIs, uh, um, made more agile uh, and consumed by uh, both users and consumers to be uh, uh, more efficient. And this will drive your priorities in implementing uh, a cloud management platform project, uh, exposing these components uh, uh, to, uh, to the rest of the world in a, a consumed way. Thank you. Okay, uh, next question, actually a couple uh, deal with security. So, a um, uh, question from uh, Rob and Walt. Uh, so, early in the presentation you mentioned apps in the cloud may require less security. And I guess that goes to the question of how to deal with security in such a model. Uh, Mark, any qu any thoughts? Yeah, on that? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so <laughs> that, that, that's that's uh, um, for, first that that security is uh, is always a very valid point in in this kind of models. Um, uh, per, per personally, and this is what we see with, uh, for instance, uh, audits and uh, and regulation, um, making things automated, uh, orchestrated with. Uh, predictable uh, results um, is is a very uh, good, in fact, security practice, which means that uh, when we do something uh, multiple times, the result is always the same. It is predictable. We know it. Uh, then it is super important to uh, apply to uh, this kind of uh, uh, um, multi-cloud architecture. Uh, the uh, uh, usual security uh, uh, best practices, um, uh, getting all the events, uh, uh, being able to uh, 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 understand uh, at any time what is happening. Uh, so it's, it's really uh, uh, broadcasting the security in all these components, but as the build of the component itself is done in a very uh, predictable, replicate, replicable uh, way, uh, you can enforce the security when the component is created. And then you can go to multiple uh, uh, security streams. Personally, for instance, I, I believe that being able to professionally uh, security patch any piece of software across a cloud stack is something fundamental. And that's something we, we, we do perfectly with uh, uh, Alien Cloud Suite, for instance. Yeah, maybe I'd, I'd like to add um, um, something there, comments uh, that joins the two questions somehow together. Um, we, we do offer a, a free service that we call Journey to Value. So basically, we take a picture of the customer's uh, current situation, and, uh, and we provide with the map of different added capabilities uh, towards the world of digitalization. And we take into consideration, for example, areas like security. Areas like um, how do I become a broker of services? Which one? Which application should I move to where? And so forth. And and we can't really give a, a, a general question, general answer to these kind of questions in some cases because it really depends on the customer's uh, situation, the industry, the history, 
that you had uh, and the business objectives as well. Um, our customers tend to like this approach because it's based on value they get back. So every time we add one single capability, uh, it's got to be, it's got to have a value attached to it. It's got to have a return on investment attached to it. And then we move on. Once we get, we get to that point, we move on. Taking into consideration um, factors like, for example, security, factors like, like, like that some applications will never move to the, the cloud because of security issues, for example, and so forth. Uh, but it's, it's driven by the customer. It's driven by the value it gets from us. It's not driven by us or by our products. Okay. Um, a question here is uh, in regards to the uh, merger with HP and Microfocus, uh, will your cloud management platform be continued and developed in this new setting? That's a, that's a great question. <laughs> um, the, the, the very simple answer is, is yes. So. Um, what moves to microfocus is the whole concept of software um, as a unique piece, as a, as a whole piece. That moves to, to microfocus. And uh, specifically, uh, cloud automation are among the pillars and the reason why microfocus was so very much interested in acquiring um, our software business unit. Um, the capabilities that our portfolio offers matches perfectly, which is great actually uh, for us as well <laughs> as HPE employees, um, the, the, micro, the existing microfocus portfolio. Um, so we do believe that this combination uh, will not only guarantee the, you know, the, the existence of uh, the, the, the hybrid um, cloud suite, but it will also enhance, will also enhance the, the functionalities and the value we provide or we give back to our customers. So yes, absolutely. Okay, and uh, we're we're coming close to uh, our our uh, window, and I have a couple more slides. But we we have one one last question here that I'll throw out to either of you for a quick uh, thirty second response. Uh, Big Bang will never work in telecoms. What is required to have a successful transformation? My, I will I will I will state a, a good plan. Uh, but very, very basically, my my I I I, I concur with, uh, with with the question. Uh, Big Bang will never uh, work. Not not only in telecom. It's it's mostly in all large enterprise. So um, a, a good transformation plan with well identified priorities uh, from um, a portfolio of services to transform and create, um, and then. Um, um, something like a fi think big, but start small uh, on on a reasonable perimeter. Run your project as uh, an agile project with uh, multiple uh, uh, sprints and releases uh, for uh, bringing value very quickly to uh, uh, management and uh, and and users. Uh, okay, and I, I can say very simply, uh, uh, from a technology uh, perspective, uh, choose uh, 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 a very good provider, and uh, uh, HP software for this is very good. Um, and also from a service perspective, find the, 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 the right partner and company which, which can uh, bring you on the transformation path. Okay, thank you. So we have two or three more uh, remaining slides, and I'd like to go to those. And uh, it's a shame that a few people have dropped off because the next one will be pr actually pretty uh, profitable. <laughs> uh, can you advance to the next slide, please, uh, Danny? Okay, so uh, uh, Mark mentioned about uh, HP Enterprise Discover 2016 happening at the end of November. Uh, so in today's IT economy, uh, this is uh, ever so critical to network with your colleagues, other professionals, vendors, uh, and, and especially uh, members of the Vivit community so that you share your experiences, get these kinds of questions answered, and there's really no better platform that I can think of to get as much knowledge and information from the source and from people who are doing what you're trying to do than at these events. So 
the the nice thing here is that uh, if you register uh, uh, until the deadline, I suppose, uh, you can receive a discount on the registration through Vivid. So obviously, if you're a Vivid member, this is an uh, advantage for you. Uh, if others in your organization would like to attend, well, then that's another good reason to to join Vivid. And there's the URL there to learn all about the Discover Conference and also um, to, to uh, register for the conference. Uh, next slide, please. And if you need convincing uh, for your management on why you should be allowed to uh, attend uh, Discover, well, we have plenty of reasons for you to do so, the least of which is, is, uh, is, is the Vivid community itself, which is uh, powering the knowledge sharing at these events. Uh, but everything from uh, hearing from the HP leadership, product management, uh, interacting with R&D, uh, exploring the transformation zone where you can see, the, see, touch and feel and understand how these uh, applications and systems can work together, uh, they're, they're all uh, valuable and definitely uh, worth the software uh, sorry, the, the, uh, the uh, investments to attend these conferences and, and user groups. And finally, uh, as we uh, wrap up, we want to thank you for uh, attending today's webinar uh, and for your questions. Uh, we would ask that you, uh, at the end of the webinar, when you're prompted, to complete the short survey. Tell us what you liked about the webinar. Uh, tell us how to improve. And tell us what else you would like us to present for you in the future. And again, the URLs uh, for uh, both HP Enterprise and Vivid are shown below, hpe.com and vivid-worldwide.org. This concludes our session for today. Thank you all for attending. Thank you, Mark and Danny, for presenting. And I wish you all an excellent uh, day. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks all. Have a good day. Bye-bye.